trans man can't be conservative is, is funny. They literally have Buck there. Buck has a lot of conservative points of view. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of like the sex uh, incels versus porn stars or some shit. Or not incels versus porn stars. What was it? Like virgins versus porn stars? Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Masculinity is disappearing in America. I think that masculinity is disappearing. I think that it's a concerted effort to emasculate. Every fucking, oh my God, his name is Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Uh, literally, that Any that tips? is a conservative uh, influencer. Like, this dude is not like an organic, uh, homegrown conservative. That, that's 100%. Isn't he an influencer? Late men. Um, I think that some people feel threatened by masculinity and, and the, uh, the typical way that men carry themselves. Um, leading families and different things like that. So I think that there's an effort to mitigate uh, strong men in America. There's a few different ways to think about masculinity, but just looking at kind of the definition of the term 50 years ago, and you had you know, people Let's like John. Bro, how are you going to talk about masculinity while wearing glasses, bitch? You can't even see without it, dude. A real masculine, manly man would say, fuck seeing, fuck sight, baby. I don't give a fuck. And you had, I just feel, like, bitch. You had... Sean Connery, you know, you think of like Sean masculine Connery. features. As yeah, masculinity is when you beat your wife, dude. What the fuck? Like, what is, what the fuck is masculine by Sean Connery? You know what I mean? Like, what? What is the, 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 uh, even our understanding of masculinity is just like so stupid. It's just a gigantic the Hollywood dork. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, you mean the fucking, uh, the characters that he portrayed? That's what masculine, that's what masculinity is to you? You fucking idiot. It's not real. It's James Bond is a fictional character. That's not a real human being. <laughs> Beards, hairy chest, big muscles, being stoic, being brave, being rugged, being a provider. Today you have, you know, people like Harry Styles and, and Timothy Chalamet. You have people that are completely contrary to what we were looking at back then and those values and of those masculine characteristics are, are completely devalued. I do believe that masculinity is going downhill, especially if you look at like um, the testosterone levels. Now yep. the testosterone levels for Found guys is going down um, compared to generations before us. So yeah, I, uh, about it Okay, bro. I'm just saying, I wouldn't be talking about testosterone levels going down if I look and sound. Like why, why are you saying that? Hi, I'm Gilbert, I'm 24 years old. Why are you saying that? Like, I don't wanna, I don't want to say anything. They're gonna gonna come out that like he's actually a trans man or something, and then I'm gonna be fucking canceled. But like, oh my god, his name is Gilbert. Okay, never mind. He he's allowed. He's allowed. He's allowed to complain about everything. That's a Gilbert, dude. That's some Gilbert ass shit. You know. Literally toxic masculinity right now. Yes, yes, I am. I'm engaging in toxic masculinity by belittling this person. Do you want to know why? Because I don't believe in the fucking masculinity boundaries that, that other people, specifically conservatives, set. So it's, it's especially funny if you're the type of person who doesn't even fit the same fucking masculine boundaries that you rigidly want to hold on to. So that's what makes it funny. Especially when someone like myself, who would normally fit in those traditional masculine boundaries... Don't give a fuck about it. So I'm making fun of someone who doesn't, who does give a fuck about it, okay? And if you can't comprehend that, I don't know what else to tell you. You get it? Do you understand? Like, those aren't my standards. Thank you, Mesmerax. You get it. Hassan is using that guy's own standards against them. They aren't actually Hassan's standards. Exactly. And I'm a conservative man. With my beliefs and having a trans man as my friend, we don't really talk about politics. Someone being trans doesn't make me like them any less of a person. As far as pronouns- Murad is more masked than you. 100% Murad is more masculine than me. Yeah, straight up. It's true as fuck. Um, when referring to my friend, I don't really use the pronouns that my friend would want. I just say my friend or I say their name uh, just because I feel like I'm giving into the narrative that men can be women and women can be Men, if I use the pronouns that they want.
I do see that. It's kind of sad. You are what he wants to be. And then you tell him, haha, you small. Yeah, because the the rigid world that he is uh, creating for himself. Unironically is the reason why he's hurt is the reason why he's sad. He doesn't need to live in that world. He could just not be a fucking conservative. You know what I mean? Masculinity is under attack completely, but my definition of masculinity, like you said, has a lot to do with the traits that are associated with it. As a gay man, I, I mean, of all of us, you know, I mean, I'm not the most masculine man, but I do think that the good aspects hey, of wait, masculinity trust. are definitely under attack, but I don't think We're that- watching, it, someone said Murat's more masculine than you. I said, yeah, that's true. Fiona is not masculine. She's feminine. She's a princess. She's a goddess. How dare you? Here, show show what you're wearing right now. This is the masculine. This is your masculine beacon, guys. Huh? This is your masculine hero. Look at what this. He's wearing pink, dude. Ew. Imagine. Real men wear pink. Imagine fucking you know claiming you're masculine and then wearing pink t-shirt. Ew. Couldn't be me. That's pretty funny. That's like 2004 era weird weirdo shit. Hello. it's disappearing it's just being channeled in different ways it depends on how you look at it, it because a lot of the traits can also be embodied in women and and femininity so when we look at masculinity i think that that we have to also look at what is the actual definition of femininity and masculinity and if we're if we're defining masculinity by being stoic or muscles or body parts then um is it really masculinity a lot of times when you guys spoke about masculinity, you associate it with men being manly, but I think more women are embracing their masculinity. Masculinity is still there. Sure, yeah, I mean, yeah. just other genders are using it. Being courageous, being powerful, more women are standing in their power, which is again associated with masculine, but it's not specific to just men. Women are no longer submissive, they're dominant. Women don't need men, and I think that most- Okay, every, every dude's penis just shriveled on the right side, okay? Like you can't be you can't be saying stuff like that <laughs> to conservative men. So they, why is being powerful associated with masculinity? I feel like um, I think he's just I think associated. he's just saying that like that's how it's perceived. But as a trait, masculinity is independent of of men, and like women have these traits as well. If those are the boundaries that we're setting for masculinity, it kind of feels like you're going in the wrong direction. Most of America is realizing that anyone can be powerful on their own. I believe that the masculine traits are inherently in men and men have to take a position. You made a really good point by saying women are now. Yeah, no, they, they are. I mean, he's a, he's literally a fucking op. Like he's a, he's a pundit. Fiona's a pundit. He's a conservative pundit. Let's go, Brandon. Becoming more masculine. They feel as if they don't need men, which I think is the problem here. Um, I think that the way we've been designed by God, in my opinion, is that men are to lead. Men are to be strong. Men are to be brave. Men have to Wait, take... Men what? are to be brainwashed by his yeah, by, rhetoric. By God, men are destined to lead. Yeah, totally, dude. I mean, statistically speaking, more men follow than lead, okay? That's just, that's just how it is. <laughs> so, there's a... There's an overwhelming Black majority of men out there that are not doing what God destined them to do, I guess. Okay? Huh. Take their rightful position. The way our country has been um, structured to this point have been because of strong men who have taken a stand, who have fought wars. Now I feel like it's getting so lopsided that our families are degrading. People don't know where they're at in this country. Now in 2022, masculinity like is being redefined. Is and I think what happens is, is people... Confusing man as in like human or mankind with men as in, yeah, we, we cut shit, we milk, we make things that we, we, you know, we conquer. Yeah. People get upset when things start to change. No, I think that nobody ever wants to take that away from men. I think that what we want to do it's in the world now is start to understand. Yeah, it's what a is weird masculine. dichotomy. It's a weird way that they've uh, brought this together. They're pinning uh, conservative men against. Uh, against trans oh my god dude i mean yeah black conservatives don't do white supremacy challenge impossible difficulty 1921 tulsa massacre was a big lie dude the level i can't say anything else okay yeah i feel like i can't this is a risky <laughs> but like just it's wild to me that like black conservatives literally just straight up 
straight up like every single time, dude. This is literally like the adult version of like, uh, you know, asking everyone, uh, asking all of the, the white people around you that like they can say the N word. Like, please, I will let you. I love it, actually. Just like the, the conservative political commentator version of that. Insane. Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, this is completely psychotic. Is that real or is that a screen grab? Someone, Sorry, is that a fake? Someone fucking linked it. I kind of want to. There's no it. way, dude. There's no fucking way he actually 100%. I have to look this up. Um, was a big lie, Tatum. There's no shot this dude is like straight up saying it's not real. Can we watch that? Wait, I want to I want to see but I'm worried that like there's going to be dumb shit in here. Perspective. I did a little bit of research reading about the facts and circumstances surrounding the Tulsa uh massacre that it is today. It was a race riot uh before I don't know 19 uh, 2018. Oh my god. Uh, no, he Oh no, no, no. He's just straight up doing white supremacist uh uh uh, uh commentary. Like this is just the white Saying Tulsa was not a, a, a massacre, but instead a race riot is literally uh, white supremacist bullshit. White supremacist propaganda. Straight so up. What is a race riot? Race riot implies that like black people had anything to do with uh, the bombing of fucking Black Wall Street and the, the complete destruction and evisceration of, of Black Wall Street when it was entirely done in the hands of white supremacist pieces of shit and that it was not a race riot at all. It was simply just a massacre. It was a massacre of black people and of black properties in the richest black neighborhood. So when they say race riot, could it just be white people rioting? No, he's not talking about that. No, the only people that say it's a race riot say it. I upped his fucking audio. I upped his audio. Marat, please talk directly into the microphone or else I'm going to fucking lose my mind, okay? Bro, you're a hater. Please, you like, every time you don't talk into it, people straight up fucking freak out in the chat. Okay, they can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Race riot is literally started when white people kill black people and they defend themselves. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's crazy. Don't do um, it, Miranda. They turn in these black activists and scholars turned it into the massacre. Oh my god. Okay, I can't watch the rest of this. Yeah, this dude is a fucking piece of shit. Giant piece of shit. Words that I, you know, I am not at liberty to say, but you know, you, you know what the fuck I'm saying, okay? What the fuck I'm not saying. Just black conservatives have to be white supremacists. Like they they see themselves as as playing a role and that role will always be tied to their blackness. Okay? Because it's racist people. You are literally operating for racist people and you are doing racist, you're doing racist agitprop. You're doing racist agitated propaganda. So as a black person, you're, you're never going to go above that. No one like white people are not white race. People are not going to come to you with analysis on anything, but just, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a opportunity to feel better about their racism, which you, for some really weird reason, will willingly give them that, always. Masculinity, and it's always been really associated with this very machismo space. And now there's different kinds of men in the world. There's not just biological men. There's also trans men or people who, def who want to be masculine. So the, I think what's happening now is people are pushing against change because mm -hmm. change is scary and people don't understand. And so I think men, biological men, feel under attack when I think that's not what's happening here. The point that you made is 100% is, is correct. There they see themselves as an exception until they're not. Well, the funniest problem, the funniest part of that is that like black conservatives love to talk about how they're different, how they're different. They left the democratic plantation or whatever the fuck. And then they literally are exactly the same. Like black people are not a monolith, but black conservatives certainly are. Holy fucking shit, dude. Like literally. There, it's just it's wild to just act like uh, you know, in in such a, a weird uh, desperation to, to like see uh, yourself or act like you are very different than everyone else. Okay, which you know every black person is different. 
You know, black people are not a fucking monolith. But black conservatives literally portray themselves a certain way where, where they do actually engage in monolithic behavior. Every single black conservative I've ever seen ends up fucking denying atrocities against black people. It's just a role you have to play. Are different phases and people are experiencing in different ways. The feminist movement is, I think they are attacking masculinity within men. I, I don't want a man to open the door for me. I don't need a man in my life. I can do all of these different things. What they're doing is attacking men and that's what's causing a problem. What part of the feminist group feels like it's attacking? Because I know that most feminism is like wanting equal pay or... Well, you just said that women not needing men is somehow empowering. You know, having a man is somehow less empowering or being an individual is somehow but less But that's empowering. how women feel. Right? Women actually are saying that because that's how they feel. It's but as that's if... not how every woman feels. But that, no one's that's saying every woman. Saying no women, women speak for women? themselves. So right. every, all of you are going to have different opinions as biological men. Absolutely. Women all have different opinions. Oh, you see a very specific group of women but, saying this. I mean, just, you you just, you did just say that's how women feel. So are you speaking on behalf of all no, women? No, no, I, no, I'm not. Let me take that back. So, the women who are saying that feel that way. Why do you feel that women in general feel disempowered? People misunderstand you and think run-of-the-mill black conservatives exist versus black conservative pundits. No, I mean, run-of-the-mill black conservatives are not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about black uh, conservatives that, you know, are, are paid to be black conservatives. Like, pundits is probably an appropriate term. Yeah, pundits are is an appropriate term, yes. But like the thing is, like it's not an accident. It's not an accident that you uh always are are relegated to that same position as a black political commentator who happens to be Republican, okay? Like, do you think it's an accident that like ninety percent of your commentary that that uh you do at the RNC, for example, or ninety percent of the commentary that gets that goes viral as a black political commentator almost always revolves around saying the most white supremacist shit possible. It's just so strange. It's you, so strange that like, that's, I guess that's the, that's just what ends up hitting, I guess, you know? Do you think that they're just saying conservative talking points that happen to be somewhat based in, you know, deeply rooted like white supremacy stuff and it's just more prevalent because they're black? It just like I mean, it, it, a, it part of, yeah, a part of being a part of being alive. reactionary. Yes, it revolves around believing in white supremacist attitudes. One hundred percent, you're correct on that. Okay, but the like, point. Those talking but they don't just uh, uh, racial. No, they they one they one million percent uh, do that way more frequently than just like you know they black conservatives. By and large, like spend the overwhelming yes the the overwhelming amount of their commentary saying things that white conservatives would not be able to get away with saying. Like if you took what Candace Owens was saying, oh my god, yeah, and awesome. and you closed your eyes and you had no idea Candace Owens was a black woman, you'd be like, this is the most racist white supremacist woman in America. Like it just straight up, if you had no idea that she was a black person saying the things that she's saying about black people would literally be like oh this is this person is a white supremacist and and that's not an accident like white conservatives can't get away with saying shit like that they want to but they can't do you see what i mean yeah i kind of see it like can you imagine the fucking video of like uh like a white guy being like Tulsa race riot was a race riot. It was not a I massacre. Can't imagine. There's a lot of videos. I mean, like yes, <laughs> yeah, and they those guys are fucking Nazis. Like they're straight up white supremacist pieces of shit. Yeah, or on their set on their way to becoming one. No, I don't think in general. No, no, no. That's a generalized statement. I can't. You can't say that. I said well, you're the, the women. One, no, I did not. I said the women who say that. You associated somehow. No, women are now embracing masculinity, right. which means that they are now more empowered because they don't need, they don't a, man need a man. Or right. women, women, men feel empowered when women need a man. But I don't think that in, women's empowerment comes from having a man or not having a man. So why is it always associated that, uh, you know, a woman's now empowered because she doesn't need a man? A, a woman has always been empowered. Women have never been... But they've never felt that. That's not true. Historically, yeah. Women famously were always empowered. I mean, always.
They they had the right to vote. They just chose not to uh, use it because they were yeah. so empowered. Yeah, they were like, I hate voting. Please, like, I hate voting. I hate I hate the workplace. Please do not allow me to you know make my own money. Yeah, just yeah. I I love seventy whatever cents on the dollar. It's just. Yeah. So, I mean, if we true. go back to the 1920s, <laughs> if you're going to do that, but that's not what we're course, talking about. We're have... talking about society right now. Right now, you actually think women are empowered said right now? Absolutely, women are empowered. Right Who's wow. right. the right. vice president? And how long did it take for her to become a vice president? Oh my God. Dude, this is what happens. This is the di this is liberalism, okay? Liberalist brain rot is like, oh, well, the vice president is a woman. Okay, black people are empowered then too, I guess, because Barack Obama was the president, you know? Well, they, Who they gives a shit? I mean, they will say it because they're fucking uh, conservative. But like the the uh, you know the trans men supposedly are not the conservative ones in this situation, so they should yes. at least know better and be like, that's not true. You know what I mean? Gay misogyny hits different. I I love it. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> like that guy. That guy is gay because he just hates women. <laughs> You're gay because you want to fuck dudes. He's gay because he hates women. Five months. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. There is a right and wrong way to be a man. Take this second to think Isn't about it. Isn't that like a meme about like... Yeah, that's funny. That, that, hold on. This is the best part. They swear feminine men never existed in the 20s. Bro, motherfuckers were wearing powder on their faces and big ass wigs and dresses. Okay? <laughs> and those were like the dudes running society. Okay? And these dumbasses sit around and they like fucking talk about how much they like... Talk about how, how masculine people used to be. And, and you like... Anyone that fucking dresses and behaves like not a, not even a dandy. Like I'm would, not even talking about would, dandies. Would you say 18th I'm talking about courts were yassified. Yeah, they were <laughs> exactly. They were yassified out the fucking dick, dude. And it's so funny that these guys are like that. That in and of itself, one million percent reveals the truth about masculinity being a completely subjective concept that has changed and and is different throughout culture, right? Like, they, they literally think, like, oh, man, it's fucking, you know, these guys were masculine men. What happened to us? Like, no, they, they don't. Like, that's not. I mean, it's just misplaced, like, frustration. L plus heathen plus no damsels plus get dueled plus touch gold. <laughs> is this? Know, this is a meme. Like, yeah, wow, that's masculinity, brother. It's just misplaced frustration. I think that when I originally heard the question being asked, I didn't agree with it. Uh oh, but what's the gay conservative about to say about fucking the right and wrong way to be a man? <laughs> about to be like, yeah, there is a right way to be a man and a wrong way to be a man. Wait, he's gay. I. Th or did, oh no, did I, they claim that? Or I mean, I made that assumption, but I probably no. He just went to a lot of Bible study, dude. No, no, no. He's definitely gay. Like. I don't know. No, no, he is gay. He he said he is gay, right? He said it. Okay. Men are not abusive individuals. Right. Men are not to be cowards. Right. Men are to lead their families. And men who do not display that, I don't believe that they are men. <laughs> Homie gonna say, it's okay to be a top, but a sin to be bottom? <laughs> I don't think he's gonna say that. <laughs> my opinion and all of the qualities that I see in my father is what I believe a man should be all of those characteristics are what make a man and when I see a man be a coward in the truth and in, in, in just speaking the truth or um, sticking up for what's right especially today in America with everything going on I'm like those are not men I gotta my name is Clarkson I'm 24 years old and I'm a conservative man my biggest question for the other side really is, are you happy? Anybody that wants to fundamentally change society and change gender roles, to me, that, that's not happiness. And if, if we wanna fight for acceptance, we need to start with acceptance, which is accepting society for what it is. All right, you guys are getting a Marat pause. I, I don't love this accepting society for what it is business. Um, history is full of a lot of really terrible things. And yeah, you have to kind of acknowledge what has happened in the past to like come back 
to be able to learn from it and move forward. But it's I it's not great to just like draw a line in the sand and that says, oh, all those guys, uh, other guys were fucked up. Me, not me. Right. There's definitely our perception of what's right and what's wrong is changing over time. And you just kind of have to acknowledge it and try to be better than the guy before you. Like, that's that's all it takes. At the end of the day, we're all men, and I don't believe there's any, any wrong way to be a man. We're just redefining what it means to be a man. But there are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just out, redefining dude. what it is to be a man. Wait. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking Wait, about. Wait, he said who kept the human race going? Kept the human race being a man is. There are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society. Well, patriarchy is so wild. Like we literally just completely act like I mean, we're also two white dudes just like talking about this. So. I know, but it's just like we, but like it, it is wild because you, you just literally think like we did this shit. You know what I mean? Women had no role in this. Okay. It was the men that advanced society. Insane. An actually insane fucking take. Like even if women were not, uh, were, were forcibly subjugated not allowed in many circumstances unless you were like literally you know the like, like a, a a historic uh i mean it, depending on which society we're looking at yes like in the ottoman empire women did have a lot of uh um, especially queens uh, had a lot of fucking say in the um other not the harem. the harem no not the harem but i mean even in, Sultan? yeah they did have a lot of influence they wielded a lot of influence but like but so, even but outside having, of those historical exceptions, influence and being in power are two different things. Yes, yes. Influence allows you to have power, but that's not necessarily no. But even the if, same thing. but even if there's women a, there's had, a, there's a man gatekeeper that is giving you the opportunity to utilize that influence and turn it into power. I, I agree. However, my point is this: even if you think that like women were not in a fucking position of power, the idea that like society was built exclusively by men is psychotic. Because um, even if you're not an empress or, so or just, someone with influence, even if you were gay kept, you still played a significant role regardless. So let's just imagine for a second that he is right and that men did build society. That's not to say that women can't or they wouldn't have done well, a that better too. job. Yeah, right? you're right. Maybe they did build society, but they just did a shitty job at it. Women could have, you know, gotten here us in half the time. You don't know that. Yeah, I agree. That has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining what it is to be a man. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking about. But, but why do you there think is, it has to stay the same? Yeah. Why do we need to have the same thing for hundreds and hundreds of years? Do you not see the state of- It's not the of, same thing. It's just, just it's said. keeping the same qualities. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. It's, no. And it's been led by men like throughout all of history and look where it's gone. So. Oh, you're, you know, we're talking about redesigning what it means to be a man. So what do you want to bring to traditional men? I think it's embracing that you can be vulnerable. I think that a lot of men want to portray strength, strength, strength. But men are people, and I know that men have feelings. Being a man and masculinity, those are two different things. And I believe that we can okay, redefine sure. whatever that means to anybody by including other types of men or other types of masculinity. I myself am a father, I have a child. Some people would disagree with me being a father because I am transgender. But that being said, I present to the world as male, my child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of your family and cry. It's okay to suffer silence as well. Strong men i believe exude the qualities that you guys like the conservative twink you're not remotely masculine but you're still a man yeah that's like a weird thing to 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 be in that situation like you can still be like a masculine twink but he's not even like a masculine uh, uh, twink you know what i mean like makes it makes it extra strange that he has like he's on the side of like you know Reverse masculinity is like way. being destroyed like those dudes in your fucking circle, in your immediate circle, unironically believe that your existence is uh, yet another fucking uh, mark against the, the masculinity uh, dying. You know what I mean?
Like, those dudes literally think masculinity is dying because there's homosexuality running rampant throughout society. And you're sitting there next to those guys. I mean, it's the same energy as, like, having a, 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 a black conservative there, too. Because, like, this, this is a very diverse group of conservatives. But, like, most of the larger group of conservatives would also think, like, you know, black people should not have as many rights. <laughs> transgender prior but that being said i present to the world as a male my child sees me as a man there's proper ways to be vulnerable right you don't have to break down in front of your family and cry it's okay to suffer silence as well strong men i believe exude the qualities that you guys are referring to i think the problem is overcorrection, right some people believe that men need to cry and lay on the ground and be feminine like women my name what? is brand Okay, first of all, it's incre what he's suggesting is incredibly unhealthy. That's number one. And, and I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Then, uh, must never lay on the ground and cry like women. <laughs> it's pretty funny, dude. Women do be laying on the ground, laying around though, for real. Yeah. Women are always fucking crying, dude. Ew. <laughs> They're always laying around on the ground and crying. It's, it's okay to cry sometimes, no, woman you know, cry. fucking let it out probably would uh, be better off if you were able to allow yourself to feel rather than, you know, maintain this facade of this big masculine macho man that you are that fucking suffers in silence. You know? Brandon, I'm 34 years old and I'm a conservative man. I had a lot of curiosities about what it's like to be a person who believes that they're a trans man. You know, I feel like God has created all of us very uniquely. And although I have beliefs and I follow the Bible to the T, I still want to know from other people what their experiences are. It doesn't mean I have to agree, but I really want to know what other people are feeling from the person who's experiencing it real time. I have When's the last privilege. time I cried? I have no idea. Oh, sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived both lives, and I can tell you firsthand that it does exist. I am taken much more seriously in my career since I've transitioned as a man. Prior to transitioning, I would work just as hard, if not harder, for the same position and not be considered. The minute that I transition, well, I am immediately taken more seriously. I can give you an example. Obviously, with COVID, there's like the mask mandate, right? So I have to tell customers all the time, it needs to be up your nose, right? I do that all day. My manager who's above me, who is a woman, will have to go to them, tell them they give her a fight. But the minute I just look in their direction, it's up. It doesn't seem like a privilege, but it is because now my manager has to work three times harder for something that's so simple. I think the word privilege is the thing that turns a lot of people off with right. this conversation. But that being said, again, myself living my life as a female, pretty much half my life, and then now half my life as a man. There is no way I could not be honest about the fact that my life has changed drastically. Also being a white man, that's also a conversation a lot of people don't want to have. But I have privilege of being white and privilege also of being a man now. I can walk into any room and command that room in a heartbeat because people just do that with men. And I think the I thing is that biological men are born say, into that space, the so they'll never ever see it. Why do we now, as women who have become it's men, okay to get to have this thing? It's 100% because we are men. We look like men. Nobody would ever know. No one would ever know that no. we used to be women. So, so it's actually a real lived experience. So, I agree with a lot of what you. Buck, Buck has such a. Uh, he's such an old head, dude. Like. He is such a fucking old head uh, trans man. It, it literally is like the reason why you think he's based is because like he's saying things from the point of view of like he's saying things from the point of view that is like outdated and also uh, like 
he's saying things that are that are appealing to to uh cis people like he he the unfortunate reality is that like his approach to uh being trans unless he's updated his views but like uh his approach to to the trans existence is definitely like trans medicalist and like he keeps saying stuff like i was a woman <laughs> and now i'm not you know that's like like the Blair White approach I mean I don't know if he's as bad as Blair White let's be real Blair White is like a straight conservative you know what I mean oh we updated oh my new best friend Blair White oh god wow two months mega chad status achieved fuck sucks sis digs harder IRL than any of his porns <laughs> That's that's funny. I mean, it's just look, dude. Hey, listen, listen. A lot of you, uh, a, a lot of you, baby trans didn't fucking grow up, grow up in a world that that he grew up in. Okay, that's just the reality. And and I don't need to tell you this. I'm a cis person, but you know that already. That's why, like in the UK and shit, like older trans people in in uh, the UK, straight up. Uh, prefer the term transvestite for example you know what i mean there's like a lot of uh there's a there's a lot of uh, uh differences in culture with like older the older trans generation uh the the trans elders than or transsexual not transvestite sorry transsexual and transvestite too um stop saying yikes chat he's right yeah i don't understand why like fucking you know like 18 year old uh, uh they thems in the chat are like yelling at me about some shit that they might not have fucking learned about yet about their own uh culture what the fuck what, what do you mean yikes Yeah, and a lot of um a lot of trans people, uh a lot of younger trans people basically uh, uh offer a lot of uh leeway to older trans people because, you know, they've been through a lot. They've just like it's just you know, it's the the shared pain and the shared struggle that they completely understand. So they make uh they make they give them leeway, even if uh, older trans people sometimes will become mouthpieces for transphobic cis uh, pieces of shit. Hassle. It's kind of like, somewhat kind of like the attitude that uh, some black people have towards, you know, Candace Owens. Like, no matter what you say or do, Candace Owens is still a black woman. And that's true, you know? And there are certain things you should not say about Candace Owens or... Uh, are unacceptable you can't call uh candace owens the n-word for example you know there's no tactical n-word like that's not a thing you should ever be able to do just because someone is uh, preaching white supremacist shit doesn't mean you can say that you know what i mean um equating buck to candace owens the biggest l i don't i don't think that i don't think buck's entire worldview is as like distorted and, and and like he still reps being trans and has for a very long time and has done that throughout most of his experience in a way that like candace owens has never repped being black or black issues you know what i mean which is why i'm not i'm not saying uh, he's as bad but he does have a lot of uh, uh, bad qualities for sure. To all are saying, as far as like transitioning, um, but as a black man, privilege looks way different for me because if I'm walking down the street, then I'm seen as a threat by police, by women, by anybody else. Being seen as a man is where my privilege stops. 
and where everything else begins. So I don't see it as privilege. Okay, I, I got a lot to say about this topic here. <laughs> First of all, I mean, we have to be transparent and honest with each other. You know, I think that not everybody on this side presents 100 percent like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. You know, men have it really hard in this world and they've always had it hard in this world. The wars have been fought by men. They've died in the hundreds of thousands. Men commit suicide more. Men work more to dangerous jobs. You know, if somebody broke in this place right now, who are they gonna expect to defend everybody in here? It's gonna be the men. If your family fails, they're not looking at your wife. They're not, they're looking at the man. You know, I just want people to understand it. There's, 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 there's some advantages that men have and then also- I think Candace owns red being black when she used to have that anti-Trump site. I mean, she literally was a victim to hate crime and, and one a, a successfully sued her, uh, her county's like board of education uh, for being victim to an anti-black uh, hate crime when she was in high school. Um, but she's just a grifter through and through. Like her, her rise to prominence came from her advocacy for white supremacist values and white supremacist attitudes, which is why I don't consider that to be like, I just, I don't, I don't uh, consider her to be like someone who genuinely or legitimately ever repped you know, black causes. She just reps Candace Owens above all else. You know what I mean? On this side presents 100% like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. You know, men have it really hard. Wait, what? If I have you on the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man? Wait. In this world. Wait, what do you mean? This topic <laughs> here. First of all, I mean, we have to be transparent and honest with each other. You know, I think that not everybody on this side presents 100 percent like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. That's bullshit. That's straight bullshit. Yo, that's first of all, that's fucked up to say. OK, but it's also not even real. That is so bullshit. Passing is not. Passing is not the, the end-all be-all of, like, being trans, obviously. But, like, those motherfuckers pass. Are you out of your mind, dude? Yo, please. Please try to point to any of those trans dudes in, in, in a crowded room and be like, that woman over there. And see if anyone understands what the fuck you're saying, okay? Like... That's so ridiculous, dude. First of all, if the irony, of course, is like if he doesn't pass, if any of them don't pass in your mind, then neither does Ben Shapiro. Okay? Then neither do most men. Because guess what? Gender is not fucking binary in the way that people try to explain it away. It's just not. You know what I mean? Like, there are dudes out there who can't grow fucking facial hair. There are dudes out there who can't, uh, who, who are not super tall. Like, but they're still dudes. It, it has nothing. It doesn't take away from them being dudes. You know? <sighs> Just, it's so funny. Yeah, Gilbert is sitting right there, Brandon. <laughs> I can't believe you're about to say that. <laughs> You know, men have it really hard in this world and they've always had it hard in this world. The wars have been fought by men. They've died in the hundreds of thousands. Men commit suicide more. Men work more to dangerous jobs. You know, if somebody broke in this- He would just agree with you that Benjamin doesn't pass as a man though? No shot. He would never agree with that. Are you kidding me? Place right now, who are they gonna expect to defend everybody in here? It's gonna be the men. If your family fails, they're not looking at your wife. They're not, they're looking at the man. You know, I just want people to understand it. There's, 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 there's some advantages that men have and then also men do struggle and cuss. But that doesn't change the reality of male privilege. Like women have those uh, disadvantages as well. It's so weird, dude. It's so fucking strange. Like people just don't understand privilege. I've, I've realized like we all have it. Okay. We all have it in some way uh, over others. Okay. Like, there is one guy on the planet right now that is the least privileged person on the planet, okay? They're, like, a second away from dying, okay? And, and that always changes. That person dies, and then there's someone else that is, you know, just as uh, not privileged as, as the other person, okay? Is but for some fucking weird reason, we just never... We can't comprehend that privilege is not about... Privilege doesn't automatically mean you're just fucking balling, dude, okay? 
it's something that we always talk about where uh, it's something that that conservatives regularly talk about with like black people for example like white privilege white privilege white privilege like well there's poor white people it's like of course there are poor white people like what do you mean privilege just means that there aren't extra compounding factors that you have to deal with because there's no historical way of like harming you by virtue of the color of your skin and we're talking about white privilege same with male privilege you know it doesn't mean that you're still not getting fucked over it doesn't mean that like men don't get abused by the fucking capitalist order of society you know what i mean like it, it's so stupid of course of course men get fucked over of course but not on the virtue that they're men Unless we're talking about divorce court, in which case, yes, you are a victim of divorce court. You know what I mean? <laughs> custody and all kinds of different oh, no, things. No, 100%. I 100% I agree with you as a man now, right? But I think my perception of it is different than yours because you were born male. Sorry. One of, the, one of the best parts about this, of course, I have to once again say one more thing here. One of the best parts about conservatives regularly fucking talking about, like, you know, how much men suffer is that the way that they analyze men's suffering is, is unironically a distraction away from actually alleviating that suffering. It's like, dude, literally get out of the way then, okay? You can't fucking talk about like, oh, well, men are, men are victimized. And then you turn around and you're like, okay, you're right, actually. And we should do something about it. And he's like, no, actually, but men are victimized. So I should be fucking mean to women. Why are you allowing, why are you recognizing that there's a problem and then literally continuing to fucking, uh, to, to cause subjugation to others and to extend that suffering instead of trying to solve it? You were raised male. You have a whole other space in that. And I totally respect your opinion on that. And I believe that that is a true lived experience as a born man. Yeah, and let me add with the black man because yeah. we have a different, a total different reality in that. I don't, in, in no way, form, or fashion do I go into a room and I feel like I'm less than. I think I command presence when I go into a room because the way I'm dressed and I'm tall. I go in the streets. I've never had a person cross the street. I've never been attacked by a police officer. I was a police officer. You know, I've been pulled over probably three times in, in my entire life. I mean, my biggest question with this and why I don't necessarily agree with it is because when it comes to privilege... Dude, you're literally a cop. Like, yeah, no shit, dude. That's crazy. Oh God, it's so fucking, it's, it's so funny, dude. Conservatives are so ridiculous. That's why like it takes, it takes someone to be like hate crime for, uh, for, for or, like a loved one to be hate crime for that person to like literally be like, okay, maybe I was wrong. It's wild. Like Dick Cheney, homophobic, anti-LGBT daughter comes out as a lesbian. He's like, all right, maybe, maybe we're, we're only, you know, BTQ phobic now. The L part is fine. Like. It's just, you, you shouldn't Wait. only fucking change your mind when, when a loved one is impacted by your bigotry. It, it's ridiculous. Like, try to, like, expand beyond that. It, it's wild. It's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, fucking racism in the criminal justice system doesn't exist because I'm a cop and I've only been uh, pulled over three times. So, motherfucker, you're a cop. Yeah. Okay, you're a cop. <laughs> what the fuck there's not really a way to quantify it it's very subjective um so like your version of male privilege and your version of male privilege are very different so it's it's hard to see the other side because you've never lived yeah there. He, i mean tatum uh, <laughs> brandon also said you know males suffer from suicide and then leading up to that males suffer from suicide take he also said he needs to know the difference between uh, fucking and black that, you know, you should suffer in silence as a man, which, you know, if you suffer in silence as a man, well, that's that's one way that you're going to fucking. That's, uh, that's definitely a, a way that you're going to suffer. Probably uh, not great in dealing with the uh, in dealing with. Suicide. Yeah, the difference between you and us is we see it. 
because we've right. lived it. You have not. So it's easy to speak and be like, well, it doesn't exist. But well, how would you know? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I, I think everybody has certain privileges. But what I think the question here is what privilege. defines male privilege over women? Because women have privileges too. Right. So is there a graph that it's, you guys are calculating to make men have more than women or what? The privilege is not acknowledging what you have that comes so easy. So do you think that your fear, because you live both sides, right. do you think your fear is something that you have in your mind and you think no. it's a reality? Because, no. No, let me say this, you never, you never really change as a person. You're the same person mm -hmm. right, that you exactly. were. So you have the same physical capabilities that you did no. when you were a woman. No, not, no. You, you don't? My, no, my strength is entirely different after well, I, I, well, What percentage would you say? A, uh, more than 100%. Okay, I weigh so, like you still 100 know, pounds, but you, now you still I weigh like You're still not probably as strong as me. But it's not about strength. It's what? That yeah. Yeah, but first of all, what? Wait. So what? He's probably stronger than the rest of the. He's stronger than Gilbert. You know what I mean? What does that mean? Like, yeah, maybe not as much as you, you fucking gigantic idiot. But, <laughs> but like that doesn't change. Like he's definitely stronger than Gilbert. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? Gilbert is sweating now? Yeah. Oh, I'm strong. That or, women are targeted. Men are not targeted. I mean, maybe sometimes. I'm not saying it's never going to happen. They're targeted by other men. Most right, of the right. Homicides but women are targeted by, are, are by other men. I think women it, have less of a safe space. That's I disagree. What I'm about. Men, men don't have a safe space. If you go to certain cities, they get murdered by other men. Okay, but I'm, cities, about okay, but I'm not talking about certain cities. I'm so talking about women. everyday life. Yeah, Wait, every what? He's saying men are targeted by men? Okay, so are women, though. That is, I was about to say, that's a really idiotic fucking argument to make about men being violent because it's the exact same one that is extended to black people all the time uh, to justify racial profiling. Uh, but then I realized, like, he's a conservative who denies the, the Tulsa massacre and says it was a race riot. So he probably thinks that, too, about black people. So, you know, he is a cop after all. I think it's a, that's a blanket have you ever statement. been have you been attacked as a woman been, i have, I have been <laughs> i've been raped yes. i've been attacked i've been i can go on and on and on i was homeless living in the streets raped all the time it, it happens it's a real thing yeah. i didn't see the guys on the street getting raped but you but go, men do get raped 100 percent but the bro don't act like for even a second that you give a shit about rape okay you're a conservative these guys are disgusting bro the only time they ever fucking use like any kind of of oppression that that one group is facing as a consequence of like systemic uh, uh causes they're literally using it exclusively as a talking point never anything but just a talking point it's the classic like oh you want immigrants to come here well what about the homeless people that we have living on the streets and then if you turn around and say what about the homeless people in the streets in an, any other conversation they're like actually fuck those guys they're lazy and they're crazy and they're transients and you know they should be melted into biomatter like you don't give a fuck you're just using men getting raped as a talking point here that's it that is the beginning and end of your interest in that subject matter okay Experience. Do, you, do you get cats called down the street? Like, I mean, women happen? women say things to me when I was but a police officer. Do you feel, do you feel threatened? Them. You feel empowered though, right? You, no, I you, don't feel empowered. I feel that that's disgusting. But do you feel scared? Do you feel threatened when a woman but cat calls you? No, I don't. But okay, I don't then. feel I don't feel threatened if a man right. tried to challenge. Because you have that male privilege, right? As a woman, what if, no, a man, no, different. what if a man was whistling at you when you were walking down the street? I've had it happen to me. I had gay men whistle to me. How does that make you feel? I don't care. Okay, cool. I mean, as long as you don't touch me, we cool. Right, you're a big dude. You've never fucking felt it. Like, uh, you've never felt it. You will never be able to understand it. You're a big dude. It's just, it's impossible. Almost impossible to understand. Like, I've been uncomfortable. But like, until you actually legitimately, and I don't want to talk about it, I've talked about this before, but until you actually legitimately are in the presence of someone that's larger than you, that is being intimidating, you, you're just never going to fucking understand that, okay? You're just not. You're never going to understand it. Okay? It's just straight up the truth. Right. I, 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 you I, you yeah. may think I'm attractive. Right. It's I fine. Think, it's cool. I get I it. I think women will say the same thing as long as you're not like 
trying to be predatory, and I've seen it because I go to clubs with my friends who are girls, and I have to tell the men to literally leave them alone because they keep going, and they're predatory, and they're literally scouting out for women that are drunk or whatever, not even drunk. She could say no a thousand times, and they're still gonna bother her. But the minute that I say something, they stop. Women are not as strong as men, and they get targeted. Sure, yes, that is a privilege that men have over women, but that doesn't mean that men have privilege because of that one situation. Men commit suicide way more than women do. Why because do because if we're gonna go that route, route, trans men commit suicide I, I, twice, no, twice right, the rate. But like, that's Okay. I, th I think what's right. important right. here is to distinguish the fact that yes, no one is negating the fact that women can get preyed on. You know, there, there's situations where, where this happens, right? Like right. no one's going to deny that. Yeah. But we're also just trying to say that th it's not like a one-sided coin here, no. where there's no no, 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 like men are just you know we just have it good and we can do whatever no, we want. I, mean, not, I do we not can't, believe we can't that's even true. we can't even be the next Supreme Court justice because you know it's like. <laughs> but you know, I, again, I live as a man, so I see the difference. Yeah. I, when I said yes. I have privilege and I walk into a room, of course. But then there's other things that are expected of me now as a man that I would never knew were expected. So would of me. you guys agree that women that there's such thing as? Female privilege? Absolutely. Oh, sure, 100%. Yeah. My, my wife has privilege because she has me. That's right. So <laughs> she don't have to worry about her right safety on. because I'm there. I don't believe that as a, I mean, as a man, it's like, you know, there's marketing for women-owned brands. Mm -hmm. I can't, like I said, I can't be the next Supreme Court Justice. Like, it's, women are very much more empowered today, which I think is, yes. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, like, good for you. But um, I, I think that the man I am, I probably have privilege because I'm, you know, six foot two ten. Like I'm, right. no one's uh, picking on me when I walk down the street. You know, I used to live in Chicago and uh, I used to walk home all the time at night. But like, was that smart? Probably not. But I felt a little safe because you know I'm not five foot one hundred pounds. I'm Max. I'm twenty nine and I'm a conservative man. In today's society, women and men can be whatever they want and be as successful or as strong or as big of a leader as they choose. So I'm just wondering. In a, in a society that is so seemingly level, more level than ever before, why are we transitioning to different genders to, to find and what are we looking for? Biology determines gender. Trigger warning. Buck is about to do some shit here. And you will now understand why people say. Yup. So, um, sex and gender, people try to argue that they're different, but sex and gender actually go hand to hand. And our biology being Wait, a man. Wait, sex and gender go hand in hand? That's really interesting. You're sitting next to a gay man, Gilbert. How the fuck does. Sexuality is completely fucking, completely removed from gender. Completely. It's just completely removed from gender. And comes down to unless they do every fiber within our body. So whether that be DNA, chromosomes. Oh, he meant he um, didn't mean. Oh genes. no, he didn't mean sexuality. Sorry, he meant fucking. Oh god, my brain is so broken. I'm sorry. He he meant uh, sex as in like what uh, Buck will consider to be biological gender. That was testosterone levels, uh, bone density. Um, there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into it, and it all has to do with biology. So biology, I 100% I believe in biology. Today we don't. We talk about biology being a social construct. I disagree with that. I mean, even then he's not. Even then he's not fucking. Stop outing these men. What do you mean? He said he's gay. Shut the fuck up, Doctor Pagsmore. You bitch. No one says biology is a social construct. Yeah, I like. Where is that coming from? Who is biology. who's saying yeah, biology is a social construct? No one says biology is a social construct. Does that go into it? And it all has to do with biology. So biology, I 100% I believe in biology. Today we don't. We talk about biology being a social construct. Who? Who is we? Who the fuck? What does that mean? It, I I feel like half the time, half the time, I only hear about like supposedly the left's fucking point of view exclusively from republicans you know what i mean this is the this is the fuck whites the fuck whitey uh take 
that you rarely ever hear from black people, but instead just from like white people who think black people are saying it all the time. And don't give me that semantic uh, or that pedantic fucking philosophical approach of being like biology. All our all sciences technically could be whittled down to like being a social construct, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no one. Gender is a social construct. Biology, OK, is, is not. But even biology shows that sex or whatever you want to call it, OK, is still not uh, as as rigid or a binary as people think it is it's so fucking stupid like there's not a single there's not a single fucking like actual biologist who is going to unless they're actually making money off of this uh uh, unless they're like literally making money off of being like uh, the the heterodox thinker skeptic or whatever the fuck not a single honest person in that field is going to be like yeah no sex is totally uh, binary it's never been binary I disagree with that as a transgender person. I was born biologically female. I always acknowledge that. And today I live as a male. Now, that being said, sex and gender, they are trying to separate those things. Gender can be, I've chosen my gender. As you see, nobody would, I think, probably understand that I used to be a female. Now, many people do, like you just said, believe that sex and gender are one thing and you can never change those. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm trying to show the world that this is how I feel by presenting the outside. Side. But I think denying biology is where we get into a lot of problems. So if you want to be, you know, seen as a man, then like, right on. who are you to? I, I don't care. I mean, you do you. Whatever makes you happy. But I think like. By the way, they found the most woke fucking conservatives they can, which is interesting. They always, they always find like, even the fucking conservatives are like, yeah, I, you, I want to see you as, as a man. I think you're a man. Like, most conservatives be like. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you know? Like, Ben Shapiro is the perfect example of this, where, like, he will literally Finally accidentally correctly gender a trans person and now. then stop themselves to misgender the trans person. You know what I mean? Like, like we get... It becomes a slippery slope. It's like, how are we going to deny basic human facts? Like... There's two I genders. think that causes problems, and it causes problems for me. Yeah. Because the minute I start denying your biology, now you feel attacked by me. Right. And I don't want you to feel attacked by me. I never want you to feel, I want to be a part of, if that makes sense. You don't have to agree with my choice of how I live my life, but all I ask for is respect. What do you have on your driver license and your birth certificate? Right, Did you great, change it to great. male or do you change it to? So, so that being said, I transitioned to live as a man 29 years ago. So that was way before you see any of this stuff. And I had to acknowledge my biology, right? That being said, my license, I travel the world. It has to say male. Can you imagine if I showed up at the, at the, the airport and they're like, female? <laughs> Dude, there's something going on here. But I actually got my, my birth certificate changed to male. I was the first person to do that here in Los Angeles. But that being said, I kind of think that it might have been a mistake to do that now, looking forward today. Oh my I God, never... dude. Yo, literally just so, so brain broken, dude. So fucked up straight up dude straight up oh yeah no i i did that and then i realized like you know oh that's so fucked up i realized it's not a privilege that should be given to anyone else <laughs> that's oh jesus father hussein it's my birthday can i have a b-day smooch I I thought we would be having this conversation. I'm glad you said that because I love that people can express themselves. We live in America. It doesn't matter what I believe, what my religion is. I, I love that people can live their best life. I would never ever in my life protest or, or try to go against a person who wants to identify. The problem is, it's when you begin to try to change language and you begin to try to change reality. And then, then therefore it changes on the children and all of that becomes problematic. If a person says, okay, I acknowledge I'm born as a man or a woman, but I want to identify as this. Cool. I respect that. And even if I didn't, 
want to see it that way, and some people may be a little more ambiguous, I wouldn't never disrespect you. I'll call you by your name. That's right. Whatever name that you want to be associated with, I'll, I'll do that. And I, and I think if everybody in the country can get on that same page, I think we'll see less division. I've noticed in a lot of the trans individuals that I've met, the older generation who had it a lot harder in society to be accepted, is a lot more willing to have the conversation. We didn't have social media. I didn't have cell phones. I didn't have computers when I transitioned. This is how you build bridges. I'm Buck, I'm 59 years old, and I'm a trans man. Because I'm an elder trans man now, and there's a much newer generation, there's a definite space where I have a different way of being than the younger generation, and why I tend to call myself a transsexual man. And I believe in biology, I believe in binary, so it really does not necessarily align with the new thought process that is happening with the newer generation. So I love this question. I didn't pre-watch, um, I just know his uh, POV. Biology does change. Our bone density does change. Our muscle structure does change. Our testosterone levels do change. So biologically, we do change. Anatomically, now that's where surgeries come into play. So when, when we're talking about biology and gender that, that can't be changed, our biology absolutely and concretely changes. Not the, the DNA. But our, our DNA bio- DNA does not change. Yeah, right. DNA is not gonna change okay. for anyone. So you acknowledge there's a biological difference between males and females because some people on the other side would say, there's no difference, like a female, like I could look like a girl, not have any testosterone, but I'm still a male. Some people are male, some people are, are, are female, chromosomally. But when we start to take testosterone, our bodies do biologically change. Right. But what about okay. trans men who don't take testosterone? Then their bodies don't biologically change. That means then they're change. biologically still female, right? Well, that, that, and gender in itself is something we get to choose. Okay, That's right. just like you said. Well, in your, right? in your life, you get to choose. Not, you right. don't get to choose it for the world, but you get no, to choose you, it for the world. No, I get to That's choose right. my gender because I've been on testosterone for 10 years. What do you mean in your life, but you don't get to choose it for everyone else? Like, what, what does that even mean? Like, you would never do that for someone's name. You know what I mean? You would never be like, sorry. No, your name is not Ben. I don't agree. Your name is not Brandon, actually. I'm going to call you Bella. You're like, no, I'm, I, I <laughs> like, wh you never do that. <laughs> That's so insane. Like, why? Ten years. Okay, going on 11 years. But there's some uh, some anatomy that will never change. That's right. Right? right. I mean, you're gonna, you, 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 you still have ovaries. You still have, yes. you know, the female reproductive system. You yes, said that you had a child. Yes, I've, I've given birth. I no longer have female reproductive organs. Right, right, but you, you had that. You will never get male productive organs. Now, when you think about it, the male and female productive organs are similar, and they're nearly the same. They're different. Right. They're different in size. Even if okay, you know, biologically, and they're, they're different, different in functionality in, too. Not know. necessarily well, because you know, the testes and the ovaries are are very much similar. One is a one is a uh, an egg. One is a fertilizer, but and that's the difference. I love people saying. I love people saying like, "Oh, that's crazy that he's saying that." He's right. Like, have you never seen like what they look like even on a fucking photo or something like in an educational sex ed class? He's just right. He's one hundred percent right. But I can. But I. But I never can produce sperm. You're absolutely ever, right. Ever. You're absolutely right. And, and he, they can never produce ova. And you guys are saying that gender is like a social construct. Is that what you're saying too? That you could change it. But also, if you want to be technical about it, age is a social construct. Your ethnicity and race is a social construct. And I'm Hispanic. No, it, but like, you can't change the fucking time you can change how you perceive someone's age someone can look younger but it's not a fucking social construct because it is an established like passage of time unless you were literally in a fucking separate interdimensional universe in which the space-time continuum was separate and therefore time was changing even in that circumstance you would still in our world coming back to our planet in interstellar be the same fucking time. It's a matter of how much time, no matter how much your libertarian ass wants to fuck 16 year olds or whatever, it's still a matter of how much time has passed on the planet.
And the way we experience that is, no matter how we feel about it, exactly the same. I can't say I'm Chinese because I like Chinese food. I, I could I could bleach my no, skin all I want. I could so wear Chinese that's, clothes. No, race Chinese. is not. How, how is ethnicity going to be a construct? There's all social constructs. So all how, 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 how if exactly? Up, if you look up, is race a social construct? Ethnicity a social construct? Is time a social construct? Right. Everything's a social construct if you want to think about it that way. But we have set truths and we can't change those I truths. I hate If you want to say you're trans man, lords. that means you're a biological female that thinks that. No, you're a male. I am a I am a biological male. I'm an anatomically. See, anatomically, he's going to have a different version of it than, right. and I think it's so, really important that right. you understand and, and, we're all going to And it's anatomic, views. okay, yeah. because biologically, I have shifted, okay? Trans meaning going from one <laughs> to the next. <laughs> I love him. and all these things, I know that there's importance for you guys, but <laughs> He's dope, dude. They, they cut him off. He's like, I have shifted. <laughs> anatomically. Uh, he's he's my favorite out of uh, the the trans men. I'm still right. And I think it's so, really important that you right. understand and, we're and, all and, and have it's anatomic, views, okay? Because, because, biologically, okay? because biologically, I have shifted, okay? Like trans meaning going like from like one to the next. Biologically, like and all these things, I know that there's importance for you guys, but meeting me or seeing me, you would never know. So why is it important? Well, no, because no, no. Just say if I was a woman. Just say if I was a woman and I wanted to date you. What are you going to tell me? I would tell you that I'm trans. What do you yeah, mean? No, no, I'm saying you can't tell me that you're a man. I mean, I'm still a man. No, no, but, but you got to tell me. Man. You got to tell me that you were born a woman. You have I to. I mean, I don't have to. Well, because if I if I go down, if I, I if I if I if I see right. in your pants, right. I'm going to see something different, and that's that. Okay, dude, that's like, bro, that's a little gay. Okay, sorry. You're being a little gay right now. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but you're you're a little too concerned with what's going on with this dude's pants and fantasizing about it a little too much. Okay, like let's let's imagine like I have long hair and I just like put it up, you know, to suck your juicy cock. I mean, I'm just saying in this hypothetical. You know what I mean? Like I would never do that, but I'm like. Let's imagine, you know what I mean? Like, that's the funniest part about fucking, that's the funniest part about conservatives is that they literally are just like, I need to know what's inside of your pants. What the fuck? What's it to you? You, you can't do that. That's like literally illegal in most situations. That will be troubling to me right, if but, I had an expectation. But again, this is like leading off the topic, but I mean, to answer your question, if you must know, I do tell the person that I'm talking to or interested that I'm transgender. I don't think that you need it to, you know, you don't need a penis to be a man. I know that you may disagree, which is fine. Like, I get it, but I don't want one. I think now, I have a question for you, all of you. Do your penises make you men? Yes. Well, it's part of our, like, it's part no, of what makes is, him a man, is yes. that what makes well, you? Well, I said it's being a man's ingrained within every part of your body. So our cells, our, right. yes, our but, penis too. But if, but you, if, if you had to... He's about to trap them so hard. Like, so incredibly hard. Because they're going to have to say yes. And then he's going to return, and he's going to turn around and be like, okay. Does that mean that, like, a fucking veteran... Who's had their fucking dick shot off? Is that no longer a man? Like, straight up, boom. Are you are you gonna go tell the the, the veteran that he's no longer a man because he got his dick shot off? Straight up bait, dude. Straight up. Woohoo. Would you ever turn around and behave like that when someone has when someone has erectile dysfunction? Does that mean they're no longer a man? There are intersex people that you would never, ever in a million years, like, consider to be not a man. Or, if you had to look at the difference between us and between you, now would that difference be the lack of a penis? If, you, if we were naked. Okay. I mean, it, so it, it if, we're be, gonna, if we're going to minimize. Okay, dude. Come on, dude. He's literally like, if we were, what if we were naked right now? Just think about that. I mean, it'd be kind of cool, right? Like, it'd be crazy. Like, what if we were naked right now? That's sus. That's sus, dude. You're being sus. Sorry.
I mean, real sussy. <laughs> Brandon. Ten, let's go. Brandon comes out as a chaser after the <laughs> after this video comes out. Eyes uh, being a man to that particular anatomy. We, we, I've didn't, got, we didn't minimize. No, no, no. I'm, I'm 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 asking the question. Okay, if we minimize it because this is where we're going is anatomy, right? Because that's that's where we've gotten. Basic biology, okay, so months. if we get there, so do your, your penises make you more men than us? Pride. It's it, part it, of it's what not making more or less. It's we're a, we're a biologically man. Mm -hmm. You're not a biological man. It's not a spectrum, it's so it's not, it's not a question that we can answer because you're saying on the spectrum, would this make us more of a man than you? But no, it's because we are a man and you guys aren't. Well, we're different So, men. So we're not men we're is, is, what you, is exactly what you just in, said. In my view, you guys are a, appropriating the gender and you are living as a man, but biologically you are not a man. Dude, I'm s the fucking conservatives using like liberal academic language is so whack, by the way. I can't be the only one who thinks that, right? I hate when they just like use, I, I hate it when liberals use it obviously because it's annoying and, and whack and lame and everyone should stop doing that. But I definitely fucking despise it when I hear uh, dumbass conservatives be like, uh, you're appropriating the gender of a man. Stop. So to me, it's not, you can't say, okay, well, what make, does that make us more of a man? That's not even a question to ask because you're not a biological man. When it comes down to asking questions that make me start to change what the truth is and what the truth isn't, putting it on a spectrum when it's an objective truth, that's where I draw the line. What's the biggest problem with what he said? It doesn't make you, it doesn't make what you feel any different. The biological truth is the truth. And why can't that be the truth? And you also say, but I feel like on the inside that I'm a man and I'm going to present that way. The argument is that people try to invalidate who we are with that. I'm not saying that you guys are doing that, but a lot of society. No, the they world, are doing that. They're definitely doing that. They're just doing that as like gently as they can. But of course, you, unfortunately, in a conversation while they're discussing your existence, okay, something that is very deeply personal to you, uh, defending, rather, your existence, have to still care about the fucking, you know, hurt fifis of the dumbass his people that are conservative. It's wild. These, these guys on the one side literally are just like, you're not men. You know what I mean? You look, feel, act. You're a man in every way, shape, or form, except for the fact that I don't think you are, okay? And even in that situation... The trans dude ha still has to be like, you know, I'm not saying you guys are invalidating our experiences or, or in our existences. It's like they are. They literally are. So just remember when you this is a this is an opportunity for cis people uh, to, to comprehend this a little bit better. This is why a lot of trans people are fucking angry all the time. OK. This is why, because they they literally have to, you know. Walk on fucking eggshells. Even when, uh, even when they're they're talking to people who are very clearly not just disrespectful, but like, like invalidating. Does that? Well, biologically, you're female. What hurts trans people that people don't realize what they're doing is it's very harmful. You got to be aware of what you're saying and what you're putting out there. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. I would, and that's why I think we all agree. We would never try to offend you or anything like that. To be honest, if I saw any one of you in the streets. I, I, yeah, I don't care. It, it's not going to bother me that you want right. to. I would know unless I pulled your pants down or something. Right. Wow. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I can't with Brandon, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, yo, this is like, he can't stop, dude. He can't stop. He constantly, he's just like, dude, what's up with the fucking pull your pants down shit, dude? It's weird. Do you feel like you have to present the way you do? You know, facial uh, hair. Could you could you right. be a man without having facial hair? I mean, yeah. Because I, you feel like you're a man. Um, I'm in the early stages of testosterone. I haven't hit one year yet. But personally, for me, you know, I crave you know having a full on beard right like up. like these fine gentlemen. And you guys are <laughs> <laughs> like I crave it. You know, That's like. <laughs> But um, I do believe, like, it, not having... A Dude, I just... I, I forget that Brandon's a cop, but it, it, there's nothing more a cop energy than constantly being like, hey, we should do this... We should call this penis inspection day, actually. Would it be funny? Wouldn't it be cool? 
actually, hey, uh, can you drop your trousers, please? Like, it's penis inspection time. Like incredible cop energy. He's like he wants to he wants to regulate and police your genitals. Okay. Like this little small piece I have going on, it does make me feel more dysphoric. It makes me like feel like oh, that's just how this is how I presented before transitioning. Do you feel like it's something that has gone wrong? Brandon be like stop and frisk. Oh baby, but I won't stop once I start frisking. Like, you know, um, you're born and you say, well, genetics and evolution says right, this. Bits, bits, Why do I feel bits. like this? Yeah, I mean, I, have I think this. questioning it was something that I always wondered because sometimes when people say like, oh, like it was a choice, which I hear a lot on the other side all the time. Like it was a choice. I was legit born this way. Like I could remember from, I think, four or five years old where like I didn't feel like a girl. You know what I mean? And I, I can't tell you why that happened. It was just my path yeah. in this life. And it's something that I honored and, you know, it was really hard for me to continue living, especially when puberty hit, you know, like time of month comes in, obviously anatomy changes, like, and that was the biggest thing for me where I knew that like, okay, I can't do this. It's like, you're not in your own home. Children should be allowed to transition. Well, I was going to say, I find it very interesting that you and I are the only ones that stepped up, especially since we're younger and you should allow children to feel what they feel because mm -hmm. I felt the way that I felt for as long as I can remember, and it's something that I cannot deny. Yeah. You know, although my mother is supportive, when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to wear boys' clothes because that wasn't right. Now, I know we're talking about transitioning. It doesn't always have to be hormones. It's like transitioning in society, so being able to dress more masculine. Yeah. Um, I did when I was younger, but as I got into middle school, kids change, people are mean, so, yeah. you know, I dressed how I would in society, so I dress like a girl, whatever, but I think that children should be allowed to express themselves in whatever way makes them feel comfortable. Yeah. Kids are struggling to be who they are and they're, there's more rates of suicide for trans individuals because they're like, there's literally being laws put in place to prevent them from being who they are and that's, that's not right, that's not right. Okay, so I work with children. This is where I have like the biggest problem with the trans stuff is with the children because they, people like, I'm sure you guys would agree, you wanna inject them with the hormones to stop their puberty, their normal puberty. They haven't even developed their prefrontal cortex yet and you wanna stop their natural puberty from occurring to affirm their gender and then later on they regret it. I think that's um, not a good thing. See, that's why this is a loaded question because transition can mean many things for children. Now, I totally, as a transsexual person, disagree with giving children hormone blockers, medication, surgery. God damn it, dude. It's just like, you know, this, but now you guys understand why when I bring up Buck, uh, a lot of trans people get mad and say like, don't, don't use Buck as an example. And, and I usually bring up Buck as a, with a, a bunch of, a litany of qualifiers. Because, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's an old trans person and uh, has a lot of conservative takes. But what I do agree with is socially transitioning, which means why, because I did that, okay, and I did that in the 60s and 70s. My parents dressed me like Buck, I was a boy, you know, I didn't have any problems because I just lived, we used to call it a tomboy, right? So that was totally, uh, and I went through puberty and I did all the things. I do not believe children can make those choices, and I do not believe it's okay and ethical for a parent to make those choices for a child. But I do believe gender dysphoria exists in children. I had it, 100% it's there. But to give medication to a child is so unethical to me that you would actually, you're exactly what you said, you're stunting brain growth, you're stunting all of these things, they don't have enough research on it. So I'm in agreement with transitioning medically for children is not okay for me, but I do believe in a social space. When you say a social transition, mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because we can't control what happens in a social situation. That's right. That's right. Hormone blockers are a good idea, yes. Uh, as, as far as like um, puberty blockers, uh, are are really really good like really really fucking good from what i understand uh and that is if you ask older trans people who did not have that uh but wish they did or if you ask uh or if you look at the current uh if you look at all the studies conducted on it thus far they're also reversible um 
It's just puberty blockers allow you to make that choice and, and they are reversible. So none of that was true. Lamau, 21 month subscriber. That puberty blockers are not reversible. Is that what you're going to say? Go ahead, please enlighten us. Unless you're a mobile, unless you're like a mobile Andy and you're talking about fucking Buck and what Buck was saying. Buck's right. No, he's not. And not only is he not right, but he literally is, is violently wrong. So violent that his advocacy, it doesn't matter what his advocacy is ultimately because like he's just another pawn. Uh, in an overarching, uh, overall, incredibly transphobic society. So, like, his take on the matter is not going to dictate policy regardless. The policy is transphobic to begin with. But, even if his personal opinion in this situation was... You're right. I'm on mobile. Sorry, I'm on mobile, like, for real. Okay, it's fine. Even if, um, you know... But let's say Buck's uh, opinion, his bigoted opinion, does actually impact policy. It's incredibly deadly. Just like gender affirmation is the number one fact for uh, the number one uh, difference between uh, the, the significantly diminishing uh, trans people's suicide rates. Like number one, uh, well, affirmation or rather. Uh, people around them having one one family member being uh supportive can absolutely fucking change uh the the suicide rate or the likelihood that some a, a trans person will commit suicide it's ridiculous it's crazy so um you know puberty uh hormone blockers are actually really good Especially because it allows people who want to pass to have the opportunity to pass. Not that it means uh, that's the only thing that makes you trans. Don't misunderstand me. Discriminated against okay? as a mobile viewer. But plenty of people do. And, and puberty blockers are incredibly helpful with that. And passing, in a lot of instances, even if it's not for aesthetic purposes, is literally, and not for acceptance purposes, is literally safety as well. Like, for every one person that has... Wait, hold on one second. Um, wait one second. So, to me, and we talk about suicide rates mm -hmm. among young trans people, mm -hmm. this whole ideology is telling people to derive their value off of what somebody else is saying about them That's or what right. somebody else affirms to them. So, we, we say that, you know, society is the problem and we're not allowing people to be who they are and that's why they're committing suicide, but maybe it has to do with the messaging that we're sending to these kids, that you derive your value from if somebody uses your correct pronoun or you derive your value if you can, if this person accepts you for wearing a dress, mm -hmm. be who you are, but tell them to be empowered about it and not mm -hmm. get that empowerment from somebody else. That's right. I feel like that's really kind of inconsiderate to say that someone would take their life because what someone else says. To somebody that is important. To somebody I know have friends who their family does not use their correct pronouns and they've transitioned and they live in the same household. This person struggles with depression and anxiety. Could you imagine living in an environment like that where you're no longer yeah, validated? Not, well, That's coming from your own parents. But, val yeah. but if you base your validation off of other people, this is a hard truth, but if your sole validation no, you definitely have to do it. Listen, I, I, I could give people, a shit when everyone thinks about me. I do what I want. But for everyone, that's not the case because everybody has different personalities. Right, but that doesn't make it any. That doesn't mean that. But it's still. We but what you're not acknowledging, listen, what you're not acknowledging though, is that in that environment, it is not supported. I'm acknowledging that. I'm okay. just saying that we're saying that for some reason, it, they should look for that validation from somebody when else. When you love than somebody, find it and you have a family, you want them to. But validate. you're focusing not on the individual. You're focusing on the people outside of that yeah, individual. Yeah, but the individual I'm focusing on empowering but, that individual. But part of you're, being a person is needing to be validated. You don't need to be validated ever in your life. From your no. family or your friends? I Never. get my validation from within, that's and then cool. the right. There's but no we're, if we're talking about children, okay, yeah, we're talking, uh, okay, that's I was an eight-year-old when I found out that I wasn't. Listen, I wasn't. that's the privilege of being white and cis, 
and living in a society that no longer treats gay people like in the exact it's same way that they treated trans, trans people. LGBT they treat trans people now. Get more girls if there okay. are more gays. Easy yeah, logic. you can, you can, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, King, you know, spit your truth about not needing to be validated. Like validation doesn't just mean uh, aesthetic validation. It's just like validation also means literally being able to live your life, being able to be taken seriously, being able to not get fucking murdered, or, or even if you do get hurt, uh, not, uh, you know, having a, a transphobic criminal justice system, like, allow your fucking uh, psychotic stalker, murderer, whatever the fuck, to get away with it. Like, these are all accompanied with the validation that we're talking about. But of course, if you're incredibly privileged, you personally think, oh, validation simply just means... You know, uh, validation is selfish. It just simply means like you want to change my mind about the way you look or uh, or, or you want to convince me that you're a man when I don't want I don't want to believe it. And it's fucking annoying because it's so much more than that. OK. It's not it's not like validation um, for for an insecurity in the way that like uh, privileged cis people think it is. 13th richest Twitch streamer. So stupid. That's why, by the way, a direct, direct comparison that I could uh, use in this situation is, is with, with white supremacy, racism um, uh, against black people. White people think the N-word is just a mean word and that it hurts people's feelings and that like, and and that's the reason why they say like you're putting a lot of power to the n-word like why can't i say it like when i can't say it you're giving it power by not letting me say it it's like no it's so much more than that black people's uh gripe with the n-word is not just about the n-word hurting their fucking feelings you know Hassan with the transplanting dude i'm literally this is what i do bitch hello are you here are you new I, I, I've, yes, d d you know, what this is my job, right? Like, this is what I've been doing relatively successfully for a fucking, a very long time. And I'm not, if you're trans, I'm not doing this for you. I mean, maybe you can get like some, uh, uh, you can get some talking points from this, but in a lot of instances, my talking points are coming from the point of view of a cis person and it's directed directly at transphobic people in most circumstances. So it's probably not something that you can use uh, personally in your in your, in your day to day. Like not all of it, at least. And biologically male, right? I was eight when I found out that I wasn't the same as my brothers, okay? And so going through that process, I attempted suicide four times because my mother was like, well, you, you are a girl. When you're, when you're eight and you're 12 and you don't have anyone else. Oh, sorry. I mean, not to, not to fuck up this like emotional anecdote, but, um, One common talking point that you can use in this situation is this. For every one person who wishes they, ha they hadn't taken like hormone blockers or transition, which is like incredibly, incredibly rare. Does it happen? Of course. Is it super rare? Certainly. Is it overblown by the media? Yes. But for every person that says, oh, I wish I never, um, you know, went through like a full transition, um, there are, there are thousands times more people saying they wish they did it sooner. They wish they did it earlier. Like 100,000 times more, okay? Like there are so many more trans people that wish they had the opportunity to be able to fucking um, uh, to, to transition earlier, wish they had the opportunity for fucking hormone blockers, like ridiculous that it's even a fucking conversation or even if they don't have that even if they don't have that they may have already unfortunately committed suicide i linked uh luckier video so hopefully he see what 
Yeah, I mean, he's great. That is in your space when you don't have anyone else that lives in the same house as you to tell you you're okay. Where are you supposed to go? How are you supposed to garner your own self validation if the people that are raising you don't validate who you are? As a father, you know, my duty is to raise my children the way I believe is right. And if my child somehow struggles with this, which is fine, we'll have that conversation. But I'm going to let it play out the way I believe it should be played out. And at 18 years old, you can do whatever you want to do. If you don't want to wear dresses, that's fine. I mean, just wearing it. If you, you want to dress like a boy, don't make you want to be a boy. Don't mean you have to be a boy. My mom was a tomboy and my mom had me and my brother and she's a woman, you know, and she lives like that. But, you know, you may want to dress a little different. Maybe a boy want to do cheerleading or something like that. Right. But that don't make that don't mean you need to transition to something else. So I want that to play out until my child is old enough to make that decision on their own. Also, you have to teach your children to have balance. Dude, I love this. It's like, oh, yo, you know, like, being trans is about playing with girl toys and also doing cheerleading. Like, oh, how understanding that he will allow his uh, children to play with girl toys. Like, like, there are plenty of people who do that, and they're not fucking trans, you know? They... That should just be the default regardless. Like, what do you mean? You're not going to abuse your child? Sick, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's literally like conservatives would be like, conservatives do a victory tour when they're like, I am not going to abuse my son. Sick. Okay, cool. That's tight. Thank you for that. I think that's what is supposed to happen, right? Like, it's not about that. It, it is so much more than just like playing with fucking toys and shit, okay? And it's not like a, it's not like a thing that you learn uh, overnight. It's a, it's a thing that you come to the, it's a thing that you recognize. And even after that, you go through a fuckload of therapy. No one's like, oh, you're 12. Here, have some Annoying. fucking hormone blockers. Go ahead. It comes with more safeguards than there should be. Like, people don't understand that part. Like, it comes, and I can't believe I'm saying this, too many fucking safeguards, almost. I'm totally and perfectly in line and, and, um, and, and on board with, uh, you know, having some kind of, of uh, medical expert take a look at the situation. Um, before signing off on any sort of confirmation or, or, or hormone blockers or anything like that, because it does end up changing uh, your hormones, right? Or at least like stops, prevents you from developing hormones a certain way. So obviously there has to be a medical professional involved in that process, but Let's um, like there already is a medical professional involved in that process. And it's, uh, uh, it, it is like to a degree that people cannot comprehend. People just don't understand it. They think you could just like get it over the counter or some shit. It's crazy. Because if you just want mommy and daddy to acquiesce to everything you want, oh, that's yeah. not yeah. reality. Yeah. You have to understand that mom and dad may not see me this way. They love me. Right. I see myself this way and I disagree with how they speak to me or how they are, but I love them as well. I love, like my son, if he said that he was, and I'm a Christian and I don't believe in homosexuality, I don't. I don't. I don't respect anybody that feel that way. I never, you know, protest you at all. If my son came to me, it would be a struggle for me to want to go to his wedding. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. But I think that my son should understand this is the way my dad feel. I love him. This is the way. Bro, I love how much of a piece of shit he is. Like, when you're such a piece of shit that even in a hypothetical, like, you're still like, I'm going to continue being a piece of shit. Like, my man came up with a whole ass hypothetical just to fucking tell everybody in the room how much of a fucking dickhead he is, dude. Why do conservatives do that? It's such a weird interest to just be like, hey, listen, by the way, I'm going to make up a story about my son's potential sexuality. And in that story, I'm going to be the bad guy. Like, I'm going to recognize that I'm the bad guy in the story, and I'm going to still tell you that. Like, you didn't have to explain that. You know what I mean? Maybe your son's not gay. It doesn't seem like it. Why did you just come up with a story where he was so you could be a dickhead? It's fucking ridiculous.
<laughs> I could be so much more bigoted. You have no idea, dude. <laughs> Faith, I feel, and we have mutual love. And that don't mean I hate you. That just means we disagree. And I wish that same sentiment would be, and I think it, it's the same on this panel. Like, it, it, there's no hate in any of this. Right. I love every single person on this side, and we may think of things dif differently, but we love each other. It yeah. can't be one-sided. I am lucky. I'm 41, and I'm a trans man. One of my greatest fears as a trans man is my life being taken from me because I'm a trans man. Transitioning in a black neighborhood with gang members as neighbors, uh, they weren't having that. So the more that, that my body started to look a lot like theirs, um, I was challenged on a regular basis. I was beaten up because someone recognized me from prior to my transition and approached me and confronted me and called me a liar and told me I was a bitch. And I, out of safety, was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they cold cocked me and I lost the front tooth. I grew up with a positive father figure. This is good. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, it, I think for me is, is surprising because I would believe that a woman who, or a person who's born as a woman who now identifies as a man didn't have a positive role model as a man and therefore they felt somewhat insecure as a woman, which makes them, you know. Dude, he, he can't stop it. He can't stop. He literally cannot stop. It's awesome. Like, it's just, it's endless. No one, no one is told, no one is told Brandon that he's like, he's Head crazy. Stop, you know, you, you shouldn't, sometimes it's good to keep some of the stuff in, you know what I mean? He's just, he thinks he's spitting right now. That's the funniest part. He's like, wow, that's crazy. I would have thought that all, all trans people came from bad, broken down homes. Like, that's wild. <laughs> feel a certain way and want to be a certain different person. Maybe they want to be the man that their father never was or whatever the case may be. And so it was very interesting. I, I mean, being honest, it was interesting to see pretty much a majority of, of you guys uh, come forward. That's so great. I think that's really important that you say that because I do think a lot of people probably feel that way about guys like me, right? That our fathers are, we didn't have the right upbringing or what. My father was amazing. I grew up really like a little boy. I always felt like a little boy. My parents actually raised me and I'm 59 years old. Well, wow. I don't know. Maybe gender affirmation early on, not so good. Didn't come out like Buck. <laughs> okay, never mind. I've realized perhaps not a good thing, okay? <laughs> Sorry. I'm obviously joking, okay? Everybody chill. Years old, so that was in the 60s and the 70s when we didn't even talk about this kind of stuff. But my parents actually felt it from me. So I think that that's a misconception that people That's think wild that he had fucking supportive parents in the 60s and 70s. And now, like... Love you, Chad. If he had a trans kid, like, he wouldn't loves you no matter be what. as supportive in comparison to the time period. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy that he is not going to offer the, sa the same amenities that are now available, uh, uh, respectively, to the time period that, that he lived in. You can't say that, dude. What do you mean? It's, it's true. Like... Allowing your child to fucking, allowing your child to, 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 you know, identify as a different gender than they were uh, assigned to at birth in the 60s and 70s is incredibly, incredibly rare, right? So that is like a unique kind of privilege that you get, even though you're still obviously trans, so you still obviously are getting fucked over regardless, but like in comparison to other trans people, like you got this incredible privilege, Okay. And then, like, at a time when, when the, the material conditions or, like, the base reality for uh, what you can do for your trans children has completely evolved to a different level, Buck's like, yeah, no, that's unacceptable. <laughs> Which is what I mean. It's, it's kind of sad that he would be less 
open-minded for his children with respect to like what is available now than his parents were to him and he's a trans man think about people like us any good father pushes their child to one be you know feel self-love yeah. and to feel like they can be who they want do what they want and you know have life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right like our, like our founding fathers and um so you know it's fatherlessness or you know having a, a missing dad is one a pandemic in its own and, and it's one that obviously i'm sure brandon can attest to. it's 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 so critical to have a father in the house because kids get lost when they don't have one and having a, a father that's loving and strong and and uh, someone you can rely on is you know the reason why you know we're all comfortable with who we are um i had several different father figures like in my life so it wasn't you know i had a dad but then i had my grandfather and i had my uncle you know it takes a village to raise a child right but all of those different perspectives raised me as a as a well-rounded human Protect trans like children. you know if we take the masculinity out of it um just as a human i got to see different perspectives and so now as a father that has given birth to a child and that child being a male right i'm able to raise him with those same ideals that that I'm able to, to identify because of the father figures that I had. I didn't have my father growing up. Um, he was not. Why did he say, why did he look up Brandon when he said you would understand it better than anybody else? That was weird. Was that like some racist shit? Like, I don't know what that was about. Or is it because he's a dad? Maybe. Is he a dad? I mean, he is a dad. We know he's a hypothetical father of a gay kid that he would abuse, but like. <laughs> present in my life at all. So it showed me that some men can step up, like my grandfather and my stepfather who have taken me in and showed me how to take care of myself, how to be, you know, strong and dependable. And all I've been able to do is give more love to all people that I interact with. Right. So it was really important for me to have those I, figures. I think this is a, a really important thing to show people that are watching this because a lot of times I feel like we can blame any issues in society or anything that arises on the generation that came before us. So any issues that arise in our society, it's like it, there's not always a reason why it's happening. We just need to address the issue and solve it. I grew up with a lot of women. Um, my parents were divorced and I lived with my mom. I had my aunts. So I was raised by women, but um, my dad was there sometimes, and then my stepdad took me in as his own, so I had my stepdad as a father figure. I grew up with all women as well. My mom used to tell me, I have to be your mom and your dad. So, like, there would be times where I got both. Like, she was super sweet with me, or really strict on me, and, like, she taught me a lot as well. Like, growing up with women, it taught me a lot of vulnerability. And no, when you were talking to you, I was like, I relate to you very well. <laughs> bro, I'm the father that stepped up for Gilbert, bro. Okay, it's time to admit it. I'm not a stepfather. I'm the father that stepped up. Sorry, I had to admit it. Yes, I failed. He's a conservative mouthpiece now. But to be fair, it was the biological dad's determination to fucking name him Gilbert that really just cut him from the start. You know what I mean? Listen, you name your son Gilbert, he's going to come out a Gilbert, okay? It's kind of, who's, whose fault is it at that point? You know what I mean? There's only so much social conditioning you can, you can put on someone who has been destined to live a life of Gilbert. I don't even feel bad about making this joke because like, I don't think there's any Gilberts in the chat. You know what I mean? I, I, and I love you. I'm obviously joking. Okay. If there is one, but I doubt it. Like, <laughs> I mean, if there is one, you've overcome. The fact that you're in this chat means you've overcome your destiny. You know what I mean? And that's, that's brilliant. It's a success story. Do a Reddit AMA. You know, I've been living as a Gilbert for 24 years, and I'm not a gigantic dweeb. Ask me anything, you know? But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm Jacob. I'm 27 years old, and I'm a trans man. So the relation with my dad and how unsupportive he is has been a challenge for me, but it's something that I've learned to grow past. And I encourage everyone that even if you don't have a parent who is supportive, to still be authentically yourself because your life is meant to be lived for you. And I think that choosing my happiness above all else 
has made my life that much better and I wouldn't change anything. Even though he wasn't supportive, I still wouldn't have him here. Listening to all your guys' points, I would definitely say, yeah, I did have a father figure. He was in the Marines and he has this very like toxic masculinity mindset. A lot of anger built up that I can definitely tell he suppressed, you know, in the Marines because that's what he was taught to do. That's what the Marines are about. He always carried that with him and I think that's what he tried to instill in me and my siblings at a very young age, which made it hard for me to be vulnerable with myself. And I just saw a lot of anger issues that were you know, very violent sometimes, and since coming out um, as trans, Your points I feel like he's been more willing to understand me more and trying to figure out who I am as a person. And because of that, I feel like our relationship has definitely got a lot stronger since then. Okay, I can't imagine how difficult it was to come home and then try to be vulnerable after suppressing so much pain and hurt for years. So it's good to hear that. Conservatives be yeah. like, man, it's got to be real tough being a Marine after suppressing so much pain and hurt and coming back home and then continue justifying American imperialism to its maximum degree that continues to literally churn out the next generation of crayon eaters that are also fucked up from that same exact conflict that, that you know, they are now recognizing has negative consequences. Ridiculous. You know, he's l learning and kind of evolving yeah, exactly. and opening up. That's something where, you know, you guys were talking about vulnerability, right? And it's like, there's, it's, there's times when it's good to be hard. I don't show emotion as much as I'd like. I definitely have sensed um, and noticed since transitioning that being on testosterone has made me cry less, which is very interesting because I believe that before I transitioned and started taking testosterone, I feel like not being able to cry as much it makes me feel like, I'm like, Damn. he's about to be like, I was on the ground crying all the time. <laughs> I was constantly on the ground, laying on the ground crying, like Brandon said. Um, I wish I could cry right now, but it's not gonna happen. Hi, I'm Gibby and I'm a trans man. Before transitioning, I, I guess only presented as lesbian, but since transitioning, I've been able to be more comfortable with my sexuality. Um, I've definitely seen on like dating apps and stuff, a lot of conservative men fetishizing trans individuals. And it's interesting because a lot of the time they say that yeah, like they Brandon. don't identify as um, gay or, you know, within the community and yet they're fetishizing um, my community. Yeah, he already, he, he's calling out Brandon, boys. That's what's going so on. So I don't know about you guys, but I always speak my mind. If I feel a certain way, I'll tell somebody, and that probably cost me a lot of relationships, but uh, that's just how I am, <laughs> so. I don't think there's anything wrong with, I know we talked about vulnerability, you know, a long time ago. I don't think there's anything wrong with being vulnerable. I think, like we said, there's times and places for it. Knowing when it's okay to be vulnerable, and being self-aware of that, and then, you know, being strong when you need to, and, and being um, sad, you know, when it's appropriate. But I, I certainly am not as vulnerable, or not as emotional as probably I should, because just because it's not something that I always did growing up, but I, I don't feel like I have any real issues like suppressing. I just feel like I kind of right. get it out in other ways. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great you look at, it, look at it like that, because I believe for me, like my personal experiences, like, because I was one, you know, to transition at a very young age, and my dad being in, in the military, um, being a veteran, he would see me being vulnerable at times, and he'd be like, well, don't you want to be a man? And that would make me feel like, oh, am I not supposed to be vulnerable anymore? Now that I'm, like, you know, I'm going to transition. And it was just, like, very hard for me, because, uh, like I said earlier, it was hard for me to have that father figure at that time of my life. Uh, you know, my process... <laughs> it was, like... Uh... At least he's not like transphobic, but he's still like being a bad parent by educating um, his child in, in the bad ways, like by teaching them to be toxically masculine. So strange. Here, let me teach you how to be a man, boy. <laughs> you need to be sexist as fuck. Clarkson is not in the closet. He is out of the closet. He is a gay man. Why do, why do people say he is in the closet? ...of, you know, digesting emotions is by myself, and I use that time to self-reflect. So if I'm feeling angry or if I'm, you know, feeling really passionate about something or whatever the emotion is, 
sometimes I pull back and I don't show that emotion because I'm reflecting on it and trying to understand why it's there. So I think a lot of times people can think men aren't showing enough emotion, but in reality, they're just self-assessing why that emotion is there in order to see what it's, what it's trying to teach us. Lambert. Right, I, th I think for, for my, when I was female, I was much more angry. I was just reactive, angry, like Grr. And then as I became a man, I so, I cry more now as a man than I ever did as a woman. And I'm like, I think it's because I'm at peace with myself. And so before I was just so angry about being a woman and everyone calling me she and seeing a girl and I'd just be, and I was a fashion model. So that really just took it to a whole other level. And then once I I became a man, it was like, whoa, I can actually relax. And I think I do the same thing. I self-reflect on myself. I don't, I want to be this type of man that is more vulnerable and that is more uh, accessing my own emotions. Thank you, everyone. Right on. Thank you. Oh, that was cool. That yeah. was cool. Thank you. It was low key, not as, I mean, it, it had like really bad moments, but <clears throat> let's be real. Conservatives have the capability of being way, I mean, way way more transphobic than these guys were okay it was still pretty bad but like holy shit that like first of all there was not a single conservative that was like across the board i don't think you're a man you know what i mean like that's and that also has something to do with like the relative marginal but relative marginal privilege that like trans men have over trans women i think Especially when trans women are talking to cis men. Cis men talking to trans men. And, and this is something that the trans men there would also admit. It's just male privilege. Um, cis men talking to trans men is different than cis men talking to trans... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, trans women. Where they just straight up will be like, no. Fuck no. Absolutely not. Um... So it's uh it's it was interesting to see regardless though cuz like the crop of conservative dudes they found weren't like as insane as what you would normally assume is going to be the case. Hypothetical father of a gay son I abuse. <laughs> Wait, what? For you guys oh. meeting me. Or what the fuck? Oh, dude, you... That scared the shit out of me, dude. That scared the fucking shit out of me. I thought that was like straight up NSFW or something, bro. What the fuck? You can't be sending a Twitter link that says of what's in my pants, dude. Just a clip from what we saw already. Clever vid from Arkansas from a month ago, the fight for anti-LGBT rights in Arkansas. PC 